contained in Scripture. She understands what Christ, our righteousness, means, and not only that, but she has now accepted that into her heart. See the cross up in that sunset? Time period started in 538. 1260 years will bring you to what? 1798. Do you know what happened in 1798? It's right up there. Right? It's a historical fact. Napoleon's general, you know what his name was? Berthier. Berthier? Marched in, took the Pope captive, breaking the power of the papacy and inflicting a deadly wound. But do you also realize the breaking of the power of the papacy came through three events? That was the Reformation, the Enlightenment, and the French Revolution. During those events, Satan is always working. When God brings up a movement and God starts to move, Satan will also move as well. The Enlightenment, was that a godly movement? The French Revolution, was that a godly movement? There were certain aspects of the Enlightenment that were good. 1798, what was the only nation coming into power at that time? Say it loud so everybody can hear you. United the United States of America. You know, the bastion of freedom. Political as well as religious. That's the same nation that has two horns like a lamb, but what? But will speak like a dragon. You look at the history of this nation and what you find is that the, the thoughts of the Enlightenment, the thoughts of the French Revolution had a lot to do with the building of this nation, as well as Christianity and Judaism, okay? which is why this nation has... You can, go, you can go to Washington, D.C., and you see Bible scriptures in the Supreme Court. Okay? You see the Ten Commandments right there. But yet you also have other writings, and you look at our dollar bill, and what's on that dollar bill? The all seeing eye. Where did that come from? So, God's remnant church would not officially exist as an organization during this time period. So when would God's church... His last remnant church come on the scene. After 1798. Is that something that I just made up or can that be established? This is why I spent all this time doing it. To show you that God's remnant church would not come on the scene until after this time period. All you need to do now is go back in history to all these Protestant denominations. Find out when they started. If it was during this wilderness time. It's not God's running church. It would arise and do its end time work after 1798. Turn back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. It says, And the dragon was walking with the woman and went to make war with the remnants of her seed. Here are some way marks to show us what God's running church will look like. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Number one, the dragon is going to be extremely upset with this church and do everything he can to make it fall apart. And what the devil has found out to be his most successful way of doing this is not to cause persecution from the outside, but to join it from the inside. That is what we have to watch out for today. Here are some road signs that God puts out right for you and me to show us this is my church. This is the message. The dragon was wroth with the woman, went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which what? Keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. God's remnant church keeps the commandments. 
That would be all the commandments. Now, Protestantism today, are they keeping all the commandments? No. no. Will they tell you that the commandments are still binding on God's people? No. Well, it depends on which denomination you're talking about. Okay? Catholicism. Are they keeping all the commandments of God? Will they tell you that those commandments are still binding on their people today? Yes. Yes, and never forget that, because that's the tradition that I came from. The difference is, is that if you look in the Douay version of the Ten Commandments, and you look in the King James version, you're going to see a difference. Okay? Because there's some issues when it comes to not having any idols or bowing down to images and statues. Okay? So we took that out, we divided the last one into two, and then we changed the fourth. So during the Protestant Reformation, when they stood up and they said, Solus Scriptoris, you know what that means in Latin? The Bible and the Bible only. Okay? God was working with these men, these women, and when they didn't work, God raised up children to preach the truth. But, what was the two things that they brought over from Catholicism? That would be three. <laughs> okay, the first one is the immortality of the soul. The second one is Sunday worship. Ricky said to Trinity. Now, you will never find that word Trinity in Scripture. Scripture uses the word Godhead. Okay? There is a battle within Adventism of whether Jesus is God or at some time in eternity past, God told him, he got him from himself. And there he was. If you haven't faced that yet, praise God. And, but that, that thought comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and, but it's coming back strong now because of social media. And I'm dealing with that. Jesus, sometime in eternity past, was begotten, pulled out of the Father. The Holy Spirit is just a force from God and not equal and eternal as God. These are questions you have to ask yourself. What is the truth here? Where do you find your answers from? They would say, historical Adventism in the beginning, our pioneers did not believe in the divinity of Christ, nor the divinity of the Holy Spirit. And there are things in writing that prove that. But you can also find in the book Desire of Ages a very clear statement what she thinks of the Holy Spirit and Christ. These things are here now. You have to make your choice and you have to decide and study for yourself to show yourself a proof what the truth of these matters are. And the answers are found in Scripture. But if you let me explain it to you, and you go, well, okay, I trust them. It's not good enough. You have to be able to know for yourself. Because I can deceive you. Revelation 19.10. What is the testimony of Jesus? Here is another and a really important sign to show God's true remnant church. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. And he says, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is what? The Spirit of prophecy. The Spirit of prophecy. Is this important? <laughs> Why is this important? <laughs> okay, so he said it was important, but why? I'll tell you why it's important. Because this is a distinguishing mark of God's end time, last day remnant church. It will have the spirit of prophecy that God will speak to that church. Now you need to realize that in the history of this church, when it was raised, you had three other denominations that came up right with it who all claim to have the gift of prophecy. Did you know that? So, not only do you have the, the starting of evolution, 
But now you also have other churches being raised who claim that God speaks directly to them yeah. and through them. That would be the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. You know what the third one is? Spiritualism would not claim God as we believe in God. The other one would be the Church of that's that's Mormonism. It's it's either the Church of Scientology or Christian Science. That's it. Mary Baker Eddy. That last church is Spiritism. No ifs, ands, or buts. But so is Mormonism. If you study into Mormonism, you find the same thing. Do you understand how the devil works? God brings out his true remnant movement. And he places it here at the right time in history to prepare God's wife, his bride, to be ready for his coming. And Satan counterfeits it three different times. Saying that they have a message that comes directly from God. Joseph Smith from Mormonism claimed that an angel Moroni came to him and showed him the truth of God. Jehovah Witnesses, they're, they're a unique bunch. Um, the Watchtower Society, that's their prophetic voice. They believe that 144,000 is only them. That's made up of the leadership of the Jehovah Witnesses. Now, they have a higher place in God's redemption than everybody else. Okay? They get to go to heaven. You guys that are left get to inhabit the earth. That's Jehovah Witnesses in a nutshell. Seventh day Adventists teach that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all at work in the uh, work of redemption. That God has given His law back in the past, and that law is still binding on us today. That God is creator of heaven and earth, and to show that He is creator, we are to come to Him according to His word, and that is to worship Him on the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to what? Yeah. Keep it holy. Why? Because in six days, God created the heavens and the earth, and He rested on the seventh. Why did God rest? Because he was tired? Because he was wore out? God rested because on the sixth day, after everything was done, he looked, and Genesis says it was very good. The first time that phrase is used, every other day, God looked and it was good. After everything is done, he looks and it is very good. It was complete. There was nothing more for him to do. So he rested. Why does God call us to come and keep the Sabbath and keep it holy? Because in Jesus Christ, everything for your salvation is done and complete, and we rest in Him. This is why we are saved by faith and grace, not of works. Because there's no way you can be saved by your own works. We are complete in Christ, and we rest in Him, and we show the world through Sabbath keeping that Christ is our rest. So God's remnant church will have the spirit of prophecy. Two more identifying marks. Revelation chapter 14. You guys know what this is? This is the three angels' messages. Right? Isn't that not what we've been called to give? Is that not our marching orders? But well, what are those messages? Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having what? Having the everlasting gospel. This is what this church has been called to do, and that is to preach the everlasting gospel to all of them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and tribe, and people. So God's remnant church will be a worldwide missionary church. Does the Seventh-day Adventist church fit that bill? When we used to do Revelation seminars, we used to hand out this, uh, this piece of paper, and it showed all the major missionary denominations. 
and it showed where they had a presence on this earth. And the leader, every time, was the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The one that came behind that, on second, was the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church. It's the church my brother goes to. Shalom for that day. Yes. God's remnant church will prepare the world for Jesus' second coming. Revelation 14, 6. I don't know why it's so big. There's something going on there. Turn to Revelation 14, and let's look at verse 6. We're going to look at verses 6 through 10. So another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him for what? The hour of His judgment will come, or has come. So this church, this remnant church, will also preach God's judgment has come. It will be a church preparing a people to stand through that judgment. And worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This is a direct quote from the Sabbath commandment out of the Ten Commandments. And another angel follows, saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she has what? Made all nations drink of the wine and the wrath for fornication. That is false doctrine. And that false doctrine has spread all over the world. Verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or in his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine and the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark in his name. Verse 12. Let's read this together. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. These are the identifying marks of God's remnant church. I asked you this morning as I close, are you a part of that church? Amen. Is it still important that we stay faithful to what God has raised this church up for? Amen. Are we doing that? So God's remnant last day church is a biblical prophetic movement. Its central theme is preaching the everlasting gospel and good news of Jesus Christ. And its focus is on righteousness by faith only in Jesus Christ. And its rallying call is Christ our righteousness. And that, my friends, is the end. As I close this morning, and you leave here, think about what you've studied, what you've heard, what you've read from Scripture. And ask yourself the question, are we supposed to be just another denomination? Has God raised this church up for a specific purpose at a specific time to do a specific job? Yes. Then ask yourself, are you doing that job? Is your church doing that job? Are you faithful to that call? We are all ambassadors for Jesus Christ. That wherever we go, whatever we do, we're called to share the good news of Christ with the world that is dying. So let me tell you, brothers and sisters, when that day comes, and probation closes, and your friends, who you were too afraid or embarrassed to share the message that this church has been given, and they turn to you and they ask you, why? Why? Look at my condition now. And there is no hope, and there's no turning back, and they will be destroyed. And God will ask you, what did you do? I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servants. I want to hear, enter into the joy of the Lord. And I want those who I love dearly, those who I meet, and those who Christ puts in my place to be a part of that. I want to be faithful to this part. 
Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 309. <laughs> Thank you.